This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by... She isn't really bad because she made an unwise comment. She's bad because she imposed the use of force when she was a rep. Initiated it. It's Chase's support for the initiation of force. That's why she should lose her seat. And why, in theory, probably 90% of the reps should lose their seats. She supported authoritarian laws, and that means she indirectly supported acts of aggression against the people. You've got to use aggressive deeds and threats to impose these laws and fund them. The voting is the problem, not the speech. Daryl Perry, of course, can't get 90% of them unseated. He has to focus his attention carefully. Since she went viral, she's an easy target. He shall prevail. Who knows who to fight against? To paraphrase Sun Tzu. Anyway, the dim folks are digging themselves deeper in every time they open their mouths about this, or about us. Nationwide, uh, we win as long as people are talking about us. Inside New Hampshire, this is still somewhat true, although it is theoretically possible to have harmful PR here. It's fairly easy to track our, our success, especially in PR, by watching what, again, our detractors are saying about us. A woman identifying herself as Blogger Victoria, a detractor of the Free Staters, says, quote, The overreaction of Free Staters to Rep Chase's comments is totally understandable when one looks at their relentless PR machine in high gear, now, as always, designed to get them to that magic 20,000 number. They took that story and have been using it to fire up libertarians throughout the land to commit themselves to liberty. And in H, unquote. When people call you relentless, they say you have a PR machine, they say that the PR machine is high gear, always, they're saying that you're pretty good at it. You can spot the bad guys oftentimes in a conflict by determining what it is they're upset about. You can spot the good guys by listening to the complaints against them. If someone's complaining that they ran for office, or that they once got arrested for wearing a hat, that they're using the system effectively, or something like that, if that's the worst dirt they can fling, then you know that they are attacking the good guy. Or at least you suspect it, and you suspect that they're the bad guy the complainers. In this case, it seems like the worst thing the Blue Hampshire contributors can say is some guy used the censure process in reaction to vaguely violent comments by a rep, and that he was pretty effective at it. And that he belongs to a movement that has some activists that want to abolish the state government. And they used the moving van a couple times. Oh, So, some of that stuff may be slightly controversial, but are those the, the pissiest grievances these people can come up with? Really? I mean, if these were the worst kinds of things you'd done this year, you'd be a pretty good person. You can spot the bad guys because they're upset about something relatively decent. Government groupies are always telling us to use the system, go, I'll go inside the system, don't do the civil disobedience, don't be outside the system. But look how they react when we use the system. Especially when one of our own uses it effectively enough to get the oxygen of publicity. <laughs> Anyhow, this kind of thing, most of it, should have been happening five years ago. We should be getting denounced every day in the local papers. Some of them. And then others should be supporting us, creating that dynamic energy and debate that keeps the attention on what we're doing and why we're doing it. Now the speech under contract, uh, most of us Hopefully the feeding frenzy in the media will continue. It seems to be slacking off as of February 3rd. But I would say free staters have pretty much been constantly in the news uh, locally around New Hampshire since about January 1st uh, when the uh, person of the year controversy was getting started. A free stater and a cop rose to the top of the uh, contest and were vying for first place. 
Get it out of my face. No, I'm not going to yeah, do that. I have fucking right. I know you do, but this isn't one of them. Authority hounds are now starting to do for us what the slave drivers did for abolitionists around 1850. They are seeing a free stater under every bed. They're becoming obsessed with and fanatical about us. That causes us to suffer sometimes, but it gets us the attention we need. It will also lead them, the authoritarians, straight into the same historical place that the slave owners went. And that's fitting since they advocate the partial slavery of significant taxation. There's another advantage, though, to being targeted by authoritarians, and that is that sometimes they're going to be right. They're going to find flaws about us that we would never see or admit in ourselves, and in doing so, they can help make us a better movement. Anyone carrying one of these in is now being harassed. Oh, and post lastly, you should take Daryl Perry's success on this matter uh, as a sign. If you don't live in New Hampshire yet, this incident is living proof of what a change it will have on your effectiveness once you get here. I had a little bit of knowledge of Daryl Perry before he moved in New Hampshire and none of what he was doing outside New Hampshire struck me as interesting at all or effective really. Before he moved here, uh, he, he was pretty forgettable. But once he was here, it's like he lit on fire. He's only been here, I think about five months. He's already got, seems like everybody talking about him. So it can be for you, especially if you're a hottie. What are you arresting this man for? You've seen the dramatic liberty arrests in Keene, New Hampshire. Now see 111 reasons why you should move there and reinforce these gutsy activists. Keene's advantages are compelling and the list of reasons to move has just been updated. For details, visit freekeen.com